Hey guys, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. It's Lauren here for another FFT Friday. And if you didn't know, I also have a furniture flipping channel that's called Furniture Flipping Teacher. We would love for you to head over there and get subscribed. We have furniture flips every Thursday over there, but then we also get to spend a little bit of time with you guys here on Dixie Bell's channel every Friday. And here we are, we are going to be making over this dresser right here. As always, our first step is to remove the hardware so that when we're cleaning, we can get all that dirt and grease and oil and grime and all that good stuff off of the drawers, even underneath that hardware. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the, oh, there it is. I was thinking we were missing the rack to this drawer, but here it is. I'll just have to nail and glue that back on there and it looks like this bottom part of the drawer also kind of came off too. So, well, we've got a little bit of fixing to do, but once we get it fixed up, it's gonna be in pretty good shape. I think these top two pieces of hardware, I'm gonna keep just in case, but the rest of it, honestly, I'm not gonna keep that because I never see myself using that. I'll probably just donate it to the ReStore or Goodwill. And just like that, we are good on the hardware. I am gonna be doing a little bit of fixing here before we get to the cleaning. It looks to me like this piece needs to go back in here. So we'll screw that back in. And then the board underneath here just needs to be kind of bent back underneath and slid back into where it belongs. And just like that, we are good to go. And you know, you wanna always make sure that you're checking out your pieces of furniture. Honestly, when I got this piece, I slid the drawer out and it worked just fine, but apparently I missed the fact that this was just a little bit wobbly. I got lucky on this one and I didn't have to do any major repairs, but all I had to do was put that back and pop it into place and then we're good. Um, but just be, be on the lookout for major damages um, that could cost you time and it could cost you some more money. Let's go ahead and clean. For cleaning this piece, I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner, and I just dumped the granule-like formula into the bottle, and I mixed it up with some water, and that way I have my cleaner all in one spot and ready for every single clean. So I'm just gonna spray a nice layer of White Lightning all over my piece, on the drawers, on the insides as well. This is gonna help us get all that dirt and grime off that I was talking about earlier. And then we'll just take a rag and wipe back all that dirt and grime. That White Lightning is a TSP-based cleaner. It's a, it, well, it's a substitute for TSP. So, you know, it's got some pretty good cleaning properties in it. And so that's really gonna help us make sure to get all that oil and grease off. Whereas uh, just if you rinse it with water, maybe that would only get off the dirt. And then of course you'll get a clean washcloth because that one got pretty disgusting. So we need a clean washcloth to rinse back all of that cleaner and any other left behind dirt. Okay, now that we are all cleaned and rinsed, I am going to be using some Dixie Mud. And Dixie Mud is a wood filler, but it's, it's a little bit more maneuverable. It's a little bit of a softer consistency than a normal wood filler that you may use. But what I'm gonna be doing is using Dixie Mud to fill my hardware holes. I, as I said, I'm gonna be replacing these hardware holes and Unfortunately, right now I don't have any four inch poles, so I am going to definitely be drilling some new holes. So all I'm gonna do is take my spatula here and go in, grab some Dixie mud. I'm gonna mix it around a little bit because this is actually a newer container. And then we will just take a little bit of Dixie mud here and apply it to the holes. 
Now, Dixie Mud might take a couple of applications in order for it to fully cover and fill your holes. So just make sure that you are, are remembering that and that you don't get frustrated if it does end up taking multiple applications. That's normal. I'm also kind of just looking around and seeing if there's any major gashes or gouges that I could also fill with my Dixie Mud. I'm gonna try to go for a more smooth finish on this piece, so I definitely don't want those big dents. And because I can't sit still, I am going to be moving on to the base here. And with the base, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a coat of boss on there because I want to make sure that I'm not gonna be getting any bleed through. The material of this dresser is actually like a knotty pine. And a lot of the times when you have knots in things, which are just those big circles in your wood, a lot of the times those tend to bleed through. So I'm gonna do a little bit of boss on this guy just to make sure that none of that is gonna bleed through, especially since I am gonna be using a little bit of a lighter color of paint. Here we go, we've got our white boss. White is just the lightest color that is going to match closely to the color that I chose for this dresser. So that is kind of my method when I choose what color boss. But again, this is just gonna help me block those stains that might pop through because of that knotty pine material that my dresser is. You can see all those knots in there, that is, Naughty pine, not like naughty like you're bad, like naughty like knots, like K-N-O-T-S, just in case you didn't know. Okay, now we play the waiting game double and we wait for the boss to dry as we wait for the Dixie mud to dry. And I will be back here in just a second when that is dry so that I can sand down the Dixie mud and see if we need another application. The drawers are ready to be sanded. I did kind of move them out a little bit closer to the edge of the garage door so that they could be more in the sun. That tends to help them dry a little bit faster, that Dixie mud. I've got my sander here. I'm gonna put my mask on and smooth everything out. I'm just using a 320 grit because like I said, Dixie Mud is pretty soft and so I'm not trying to get any hard materials away. So a 320 is perfect. Okay, so I'm pretty flush on most of them, but there are a little bit of spots that have um, some gaps that I need to fill in with that Dixie Mud again. So I'm gonna go grab that, fill that in. That'll need to dry yet again. And then hopefully that'll be our last application of the Dixie Mud. All right, we are finally smoothed out on these guys. So my next step is to apply the boss to the drawers, just like I did to the actual base of the dresser. So that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, first coat of boss is on there. I think that's all I'll need. However, when I was sanding, I did kind of break through a little bit of the finish. So we'll see if it bleeds through at all. Boss is supposed to block that, but sometimes you do need one or two applications for it to completely block the color from popping through. So in the meantime, when I let that dry, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the base again. We're gonna give that a light sanding and then I'm gonna show you guys the color I chose, which actually has changed since the time that I started this flip just because I'm actually kind of liking the way that the white is looking on this dresser. Does that give you any hints on what color I'm gonna use? Okay, we're back and we're ready for 
the first coat of actual paint on these drawers and this dresser. So I am going to reveal my color. I'm gonna be using fluff. And this is my first time using fluff. Usually I use cotton or a kind of, not really white, but a cream color buttercream. So I'm gonna be using fluff for the first time. It's a little bit more of a gray tone of a white, but it's still white. So I'm excited to see. I'm just, I know it's not that bright white that cotton is. So I'm anxious to see what fluff looks like. And it's getting a little bit later. So I'm sorry for the kind of bad lighting, um, but I just wanted to get this coat of paint on so that I can see what it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I told you earlier that I was going for a kind of smoother look, but like I said, before I actually ended up changing my mind on the color. I was gonna originally paint this pink and I was going to have these kind of cute silver handles put back on there, but then I completely changed my mind because I actually liked the way that the boss was looking and I'm thinking it's gonna be better as a more farmhouse looking piece. So that's what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna put some fluff on and then once we get one or two coats of that on and it's dry, will distress and it'll be more of a farmhousey look. So let's go ahead and do some painting. I am gonna be watering down the paint just a tad bit. I am going to have my Dixie Belle Mister bottle here and that's just gonna help thin out the paint a tad bit. on there we're getting some awesome coverage I am gonna do a second coat of fluff tomorrow once this one is dry just to be sure that we've got it all covered and then we'll work on distressing and top coating drilling new hardware holes and putting it all back together and we will be finished so I'll see you guys in just a second your time with the second coat of fluff we're back Day two of this dresser, it's the morning time and just seeing it in the light, I'm really liking how this is looking. Again, it's not quite a bright white. I know it's really hard to tell the difference between whites in the camera, but this is a more of a cooler toned white. Like I said, it's got a little bit of those grayer undertones, but we're ready to get coat number two on here of the fluff and Overnight, I just put my brush in some saran wrap. So that's just a little tip that um, if you don't wanna wash out your brushes every single time that you're gonna be in between coats, then this is a great way to keep it moist and wet so that it won't dry out, but yet also saves you a little bit of time because you don't have to go washing it out every single coat. I just always really like to have my spray bottle in my left hand while my paintbrush is in my right hand, especially with Dixie Belle paint. I just feel like it helps it glide along that surface a lot better and it doesn't clog up. some great coverage with code number two. I'm gonna move on to the drawers and then we'll let it all dry. All right, code number two is all finished. So we're gonna let that dry for a little while and I'm gonna prep the hardware. All we've gotta be doing for the hardware is drilling the new holes, but I'm gonna go gather it up and then we'll distress and add the new hardware. Okay, we are ready to distress because the fluff is dry on there. And when you're distressing for that kind of more farmhouse distressed look, you just really want to make sure that you're going along those natural areas 
to distress. You're not just gonna sand down a little spot here and a little spot there on the flatter surfaces. At least that's not how I distress. I tend to stick to the corners and the edges of different things because those are the spots that are going to be most naturally distressed or you know if you might bump into something or whatever you may do to your piece to cause it to be distressed but you are just distressing it before those types of things happen. So I'm going to take my little micro sander here and I've got 120 grit on here and basically I'm just going to go through and kind of distress along the edges so that you know you can kind of see that wood that's popping through a little bit. You can always go back and you know touch up spots if you over distress but I just it's just be careful, less is more when you are distressing. And so I'm just gonna do slight distressing and I can always go back and add some more if I feel the need once I've got it all put together. wipe back all the dust here and then I believe our distressing is finished all right let's add those hardware holes here's the hardware that I'm going to be using for this dresser so I just need to make some new holes and they're three inch holes so I've also got a hardware jig that is going to help me with the placement of these holes I just line it up for three inch holes and then I just put my drill right in those holes and it creates the slots for the hardware. Two more things to do, and that is top coat and put the hardware back on to reassemble the dresser. So for top coat, I'm actually gonna be using Big Mama's Butter. And if you didn't know, you can actually use this as a top coat and not only as a kind of wood rejuvenator, but it also protects. So I'm gonna use this. It's got a great scent and it kind of smells like outdoors garden-y. Um, and I think that this is going to dry great because I want a matte finish and this will later dry matte. Bingo, we are finished sealing with Suzanne's Garden Big Mama's Butter. So our next and last step is to assemble the dresser and put the hardware on. It's hardware time. I found the screws that go with this hardware and actually this hardware I got at the ReStore so always be looking at your thrift stores and Habitat for Humanity ReStores because they've often got some hardware that can definitely be used again on pieces of furniture. And there we have it, a finished product. So we're gonna head over to the staging wall now to get some photos. So as I move this over to the staging wall, I'm just finalizing the buffing of the Suzanne's Garden Big Mama's Butter, and it's really looking great. And if you haven't heard the news, Dixie Belle just recently released five new fall colors along with a new Big Mama's Butter scent flannel. And it, 
let me just tell you, it smells amazing. We did two videos with the fall colors. One of them was on Wednesday on Dixie Bell's channel. So if you missed that one, be sure to head over and check that one out. But then also we did a surprise video on our channel on Wednesday as well using Juniper, which is just the most amazing soft olive green. So again, if you haven't checked those videos out, check them out. But if you haven't checked those colors out, be sure to head over to the website right now, right after you're done watching this video and get yourself some of those amazing new colors. I hope you guys enjoyed this flip. It was back to some farmhouse basics, uh, but you know, who doesn't love a little bit of farmhouse here and there? I think this one should be a pretty quick sell. I'm gonna list it for around 225 and see what happens from there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you get subscribed down below to Dixie Bell's channel, but also head over to my channel, Furniture Flipping Teacher, and get yourself subscribed over there as well. We'll be back for another FFT Friday next week. We'll hope to see you there, and I'll see you on the flip side.